police serve and protect. The police serve and protect. It's an interesting question because there's what a police officer ought to do theoretically and what a police officer may actually do on the beat in actuality. For the minority, it's kind of tough. Some people never see a police officer unless they have a traffic ticket. The guys like me, we have to see them every day. I still respect them and I admire what they do. Every time I do a police officer, it's usually after the fact of crimes being committed, so I don't think they're, they're there to, they're almost, in my, a, lot of, a lot of my opinions, historians of crime, rather than actual there to solve a crime or even prevent a crime. Like, prevent a crime and through show of force, but be having people there is kind of, you're being more uh, imposing rather than solving a problem that may be deeper rooted. You never know what you're going to respond to. It's like, it's like, you know, firefighters, those are, those are people who are generally looked down on, or not down on, but looked upon as, you know, true heroes. And then you got the police officer where, where you get all of this, um, you know, static. I do appreciate our police officers for doing some of the nitty gritty jobs that none of the rest of us want to do. On November 29th, 2009, shortly after thanks, a few days after Thanksgiving, the Lakewood Police Department lost um, four uh, very dedicated officers in an ambush at a local coffee shop. It was uh, Mark Renegar, Tina Griswold, Ronald Owens, and Greg Richardson. He said we had four officers down in a in a coffee shop uh, that were were killed, and I didn't believe him. I actually thought he was joking because it's you know, something like that just doesn't sink in as being true. And I actually made him repeat it about four times before I finally realized that it was serious and this is what was actually happening. It leaves you thinking and reflecting because you're going, geez, you know, we, we were there and the only reason we weren't here when it actually happened was because he was running late and we decided not to pick up coffee here and we'd grab it when we're closer to where we were, where we were going. And, and so, of course, you always think back and you go, geez, you know, what, what would have happened if we were here? You know, because both of us are, are people that would step in and neither one of us were carrying firearms that day. And you know, you think to yourself, "Gosh, you know, would we've been laying on the floor with them? Could we have made a difference?" You know, you just, you just never forget. You just never forget. Mark was one of those guys. He grew up in Pennsylvania, in 
rough part. I mean, he grew up in the projects, and so he was a street smart guy. That's where he learned a lot of his instincts from living on the streets because he lived right in the middle of it. And then he went into the military and then working many years at Tukwila and being on SWAT for as long as he did. He had those instincts, but he wasn't able to use those instincts in the coffee shop that day. And so if that could happen to him, that could happen to anybody. He was a good person. Uh, yes, he was a cop. He was killed in line of duty. Uh, but you know that tends to go away. People have short-term memories. Uh, I remember the person. I remember the, the cop because uh, we were on different squads. Uh, we worked together on the road every now and then uh, because of the way SWAT's set up, you can only have so many SWAT guys per squad. Uh, but he was a great. He was a great guy all around. He could make you laugh. He could make you angry. Uh, we've gone times where we'd, I mean, we'd just be yelling at each other at training. Just you know, two hard heads going at it. And, you know, at the end of the day, hey, we're still best friends. You know, go to dinner, go to have drinks, whatever. Uh, go on road trips um, for training and stuff like that. So it was always good. We're very fortunate here in um, the state of Washington. We have uh, a Washington's Most Wanted program that is uh, produced by Q13 and David Rose. And it's modeled after America's Most Wanted, um, the national program. And they help us in so many different ways um, uh, get the word out on who we're looking for and catch bad guys. Um, I think they're up over 400. I think they just hit their 400th capture here. But when you know, we went through our tragedy here in uh, Lakewood, um, Q13 and, and Washington's Most Wanted and David Rose, I think they spent as much time here as we did. Um, they were just very engaged with us and they were worried about us. And you can really tell it, it, was, a, it was true um, emotion that they were running off of. And anytime there was any little tiny bit of information or, or somebody needed to find somebody, a witness, or we were looking for somebody, when I say we, I mean law enforcement in general, um, David was, was right there and he was getting the information out as quick as possible and uh, he was a tremendous help. And now every year when we do our um, Fallen Officer Food Drive, he helps us promote that and uh, puts it on the air for us and comes out here and spends a little time and uh, it's just a great relationship that we have with uh, Washington's Most Wanted. weird how tragedy will bond you with people. We were only a year into doing Washington's Most Wanted at that time and had become a pretty successful tool for law enforcement. But then when we were involved with assisting them and helping find a cop killer, um, you go through something together that normally journalists and police officers don't go through. Um, it creates a special bond that, that really has never happened before in my career and probably never will again. Um, it certainly created a, a sense of trust that we have with, with them, um, and being able to be there and support them is important to us as a television station, and more importantly to me as the guy that every day spends 12 hours working on helping cops catch bad guys. Um, it's important to me to know the impact that we were able to have um, on the Lakewood community and, and on the police department there, being able to help them in this horrible, terrible time. What's interesting to me is that when I get a fugitive now, the first thing I look at is how dangerous are they? Do I have another Maurice Clemens on my hands? Do I have a Christopher Montfort? You know, do I have a guy that if we don't do everything we can to catch him is going to end up shooting and killing a police officer? That's the first thing I look at now. And I do that now because of what happened in Lakewood. Because you had a guy like Maurice Clemens. You had a guy that was, had DOC violations and, and should have been kept in jail. And yet here he is you know, able to go out and kill cops and find weapons. And so um, for me, I take a look at the fugitives we put on the show and I go through their criminal history. And if they're a high violent offender or if they've made threats to cop, they go right to the top of the list for Washington's Most Wanted. And in the last couple of weeks, I've had guys that are threatening officers and saying they're going to pull a Maurice Clemens. 
they're going to do the same thing he did to the four Lakewood officers. There are still guys out there in this community that want to kill cops, and so we have to be vigilant all the time. That's why Washington's Most Wanted, I think, is one of the best tools law enforcement has in this community. In all honesty, I don't think that it, the public really understands what a cop does because what we do out here is sometimes ugly and people don't want to really know. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough, ugly business. We deal with tough, ugly people who are trying to harm you know, other people and it can be a bit dicey at times. And so I don't think people really understand uh, you know, running through a yard at three o'clock in the morning in the dark chasing three or four different people um, and not knowing what's around you, you know, and just kind of making it through by your wits and your training. So I think they think they have an idea of what we do, uh, but you know, if you, if you take somebody on a ride along and they see a couple of these hot calls, they will tell you, I have no idea you guys, what you guys did. Um, and it's very impressive and man, I have so much respect for you guys after actually seeing what you do. My definition of a hero my definition of a hero is somebody who does what they're supposed to do, not looking to be a hero. Just the way they live their life.